Welcome. Several studies have shown that less than 20% of digital transformations deliver significant value. Multiple researchers even claim that hundreds of billions of dollars are wasted every year on IT projects that don't produce any business benefits. Is there something we can learn from private equity's value focus to ensure that our digital project will be one of the winners? I sure think so. I always admired the relentless value creation focus of private equity. While public companies are often prone to endless technology pilots and experiments, private equity focuses their companies on the tangible set of business impact of such programs. They ask the management teams to do fewer initiatives with higher value delivered. So I assembled my favorite six questions I hear the most from private equity firms when they review and approve digital initiatives. I covered some of these in more detail in other videos. Sure, check them out. So question number one, what is the art of the possible? One of the greatest ways private equity guides conversations around digital transformation is to ask the ultimate value impact of the project. This is often the best case scenario, but helps management determine if the juice is worth the squeeze, so to speak. If the best case is not exciting enough, then a more realistic estimate will clearly miss the mark. Asking for the art of the possible also forces the business and IT to go beyond the safe and comfortable use cases for digital projects and push the agenda to areas with the highest value impact, like revenue growth, customer retention, fundamental cost structure changes, and not just process efficiencies. Question two, what is the value of the project in cash flow terms? Business valuation ultimately boils down to discounted cash flows. It may be harsh, but everything we do in business is either increasing the value of the company or reduces it. Any project that does not create positive cash flows will hurt shareholder or equity value. That's just the physics of business. There is really no way around it. But value needs to be viewed enterprise-wide and over time. A customer experience initiative will have negative cash flow within IT, but bigger positive cash flow in sales. The reverse is also true. IT focusing only in TCO reductions within their own budget versus focusing on the enterprise will result in suboptimal value creation or none at all. PE firms push their companies to show value in hard benefits, free cash flow, called EBITDA. Soft benefits are useful and they help with change management and adoption, but no projects should move forward until the hard benefits in cash terms are clear. Question number three, who will sign up for the benefits? By private equity logic, someone should own the benefit numbers. An executive with P&L will need to commit to the cash flow and EBITDA impact in their budgets, not just the cost, but the upside as well. This is the true test of project buy-in. Many IT project managers complain that the business is not engaged in the project or not as engaged as they should be. A great way to fix that is to ensure that some executive success is tied to the financial success of the program. This also implies that the benefits will be significant enough for the business. A fantastic conversation I heard was when an IT team asked their business counterpart the following. How much in EBITDA gains does this project have to deliver for you to make it a priority? Wow, there is always a number. And project teams that fail to ask are frankly asking to fail. Question number four, do we have the right skills? This may seem obvious, but digital transformations require a new skill set. Most companies address the obvious skills like developers and data scientists and project managers. There are also other skills that are often missed. These include the roles focused on value creation, ensuring that the program office has experience managing projects to value targets, not just deadlines and budgets. The other key skill needed is creating the vision for the art of the possible. There is often no institutional experience in the business with new business models, 
or process flows different than the status quo. In those instances, there need to be experts in the room to counter the inertia of not invented here or nobody does it that way. Question number five. Is the project team incentivized in the results? Private equity knows that everyone from pension funds through the PE firm to the portfolio company management should, we have, should have aligned incentives for maximum value creation. I have seen this philosophy also extended to strategic initiatives. This is one area a lot of digital projects miss. Even companies that have performance bonuses for consultants and outside experts have difficulty rewarding their own teams for success. This is an area where HR policies actually hurt value creation. There have been volumes written about this topic, but to put it bluntly, the best talent in the company will not abandon their chosen career path for special projects unless there are clear rewards. Those project positions need to have both the prestige and yes, the compensation to attract high performers. The best projects need the best performers and there should be competition among their top talent to be part of that project. And the last, question number six. Can we make the transformation scale? You remember the discussion on the art of the possible. That is not idle talk for private equity operators. If you know the transformation can deliver $50 million in cash flow as a stretch goal, and yes, you settled for a year one goal of, say, $5 million, B would still want that $50 million. They want to know how they can scale up the project year after one to get the most of that value during their holding period before they sell the company. I believe there always should be a value stretch goal in any transformation. Everyone in the business would want that $50 million to happen, especially if they are incentivized in the results, have clear business ownership, and the right skills to deliver. The real reason, I believe, private equity outperforms their peers is because they never settle for the 5 million if they can get the 50. Neither should you. Talk soon.